Today I'll share my top 10 favorite fall videos. Keep watching.
So we're going to start off with a square wire wreath from Dollar Tree. I've just gone ahead and wrapped the base with some burlap that I had. It's simple to do. You can watch pretty much any video to see how to do that and you just attach it with some glue. Then I'm going to take some foliage and some flowers. It's little scraps of stuff I already had that most of it came from Dollar Tree and also from Goodwill. Here's the sign. I've already taken the little hanger off of the back of it, just cut it and pulled it out. And then here are some more pieces of greenery. So there's a front and a back. See there is the wire underneath there. There's a front and a back. The one side is convex and one is concave. You can decide which one uh, you want to use, but I actually used the side of the wreath that was rounded on the top. Just going to attach that together with some glue. I don't want to use too much because I always take things apart and repurpose them. Just going to give that a chance to adhere. Then I'm going to take these long picks and place these around one side to give it a C shape. I'm going to use some floral wire to just wrap around to attach the two wires together. You can use hot glue for this if you would like. Uh, if you want it to be permanent, that would be okay. But I want to give myself some options. So I'm going to attach it with some more floral wire, which I'm just going to bend like a, um, a hairpin, like a bobby pin. And just push it over the top of both of them and through the burlap and the wire that's on the inside of the frame. And then you just turn that over and pull it and twist it. You can then take those, uh, take your nippers or wire cutters or scissors and just cut that off if you want. I do all that toward the end. So I'm going to attach in a few more places just to keep it secure. Over the top, through the back, pull it and twist it. If the pieces come off like this, they very easily just slide back onto the pick. The easy thing to fix. So I'm going to take this mom, I believe this is what that is. Put some glue on there and just attach that in the corner. And the foliage that came with that, I'm going to tuck back into there. I want to try to keep it balanced, so I'm going to do some to the left, some to the right, or some to the top and some to the side, whichever way you want to look at it. I'm just trying to find a spot underneath so that it sticks to the burlap because the burlap is got a lot of texture so it has good grip with the glue. Now I'm just going to extend that color down by putting these picks. I'm just gluing those down as well and pulling the little webs that come off of it off of it when it starts to dry. And then I've chosen two pumpkins. I chose the white one and I have a bronze pumpkin over there. I chose the bronze because the glittery wording on this is actually a brownish bronze color. So I thought that it, it looked good with that. I just threaded the picks through burlap and then put a good bit of glue on the bottom actually to hold it. A little more greenery here that came with the mom stems. And then I put a little, uh, there's some burlap leaves that came from Dollar Tree. Just going to tuck those in here and there. 
they are wired on the back so you can actually bend those a little bit and that's always nice because leaves are not straight makes it a little more realistic as far as burlap leaf goes but there we go and I'm happy with the results you can always add a hanger to the back if you would like to hang it up or you can sit it down nice and clean on the back so I appreciate you watching if you'd like to see more please subscribe consider sharing this with friends and give me a big like I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye.
We're going to start off with a leaf, a wooden leaf form from Dollar Tree. I've already cut the tag and the piece of string off the top and the bottom hoop I got from Goodwill. I'm going to take some wipes. These are makeup remover wipes, but they're for sensitive skin. I use those to put in my watered down paint, and that's the antiquing wax from Waverly. Just dip it in there, squeeze it out, and I'm going to use that as a stain on my leaf. Just going to be sure that I get the entire leaf, all the corners, and then also want to get the sides. And then we're going to take the ring and we're going to use the same thing, the same treatment to color this. And this is the inner ring from an embroidery hoop. I think it's a 10 or a 12 inch, but you'll know by measuring it against the leaf. You want to be sure that the leaf has contact on the side so it can be attached. All right, gonna set aside, let it dry, and once it's dry, you want to find your placement. My inspiration is from a piece of decor that I saw that came from Joann's. So I'm gonna just use a little bit of my Gorilla Glue and glue down all of those points that are connected there. And then I'm gonna use my little thankful sign from Dollar Tree, or the welcome sign, and I think the other one is blessed. You can choose which one you like. It's in a, a metal finish. Decide on the placement and then using some Gorilla Glue, I'm just going to put that down. Hot glue dries really fast on the metal, so sometimes you can't get a good connection. You can't get a good seal um, or adhesion between them. So I just decided to give this a try. It's the first time I've tried it on the metal sign and just see how it works out. Plus you have a little more time with placement too. You can move it around a little bit if you need to. I'm just going to press it down, then I'm going to put a ruler on top and just this little truck sign that I have on top of that until it dries. Once it's dry, I'm going to put my string back through the tip of the leaf and then I'm going to hang it as if it is hanging from the embroidery hoop. And tie that knot and then slip it around back and trim off the edges. And that's all it takes. That's all you have to do for this beautiful little piece. I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more fall decor videos and hauls coming up. And I do appreciate your support very, very much. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Kirkland has something similar to this for $34.99 on their website right now. We can do it for four bucks. Each of these picks were $1 at the Dollar Tree and the ribbon was $1 as well. This is a thrifted wreath that I already have. A couple of supplies you're going to need some floral wires, some zip ties, scissors, glue, glue gun, the ribbon, the picks, and the wreath, of course. So, this is a wired ribbon. It's a checkered black and white plaid. Gonna start off by just kind of rearranging those picks a little bit. Sometimes they're flat or they, you know, they come packaged and they're all mashed together. So you just want to kind of give them a little bend, make them look a little more, a little more natural. I mean, I realize that they're faux, but we want them to look pretty nonetheless. Let them live up to their full potential, if you will. So I'm gonna use a zip tie here to attach my stems to the wire frame. Now in Kirkland's, the bulk of the floral is on the bottom of their wreath and I have chosen to put mine at the top. I'm 
zip ties are great because you have a little more freedom. You can move them around a little bit and you'll see later where, unless I edited it out, where I have to move those around a little bit to make room for the bow. So that's better than glue because it doesn't pop off either. It stays very securely there. I'm gonna take this last pick, bend up the bottom stem, and then attach it down here. Again, give them little bends where it needs to be. If your leaves don't want to behave, you can just put a dot of glue on there and glue them down to the frame. And I've glued mine to the back of that pumpkin to make it sit still so it won't twist. And then again, a little dot there on the pine cone. You might not need to do this, but mine needed a little help. So I'm gonna take another one of those Dollar Tree zip ties around the frame and around the pick. I'm gonna hold it in place and then pull that tight and clip off the rest of it. I also got my little tool there, my nippers. Those came from Goodwill, so thrifted. All right, now, down at the bottom is my little ruler strip. There's 12 inches, and that's how long I want the tail of this bow to be. So it's going to be 12 inches. I'm gonna pinch it above that. and then start making my bow. This is going to be a six loop bow. I'm gonna start off with, I believe, five inch loops. Then we're gonna go down to the next layer of four inch loops and then three inch loops. I apologize, I am out of frame. I'm still working on it. I promise I'm going to learn how to use this tripod and this camera correctly at some point. If you want me to do a bow tutorial, I will be glad to do that. Just let me know in the comments and I will fix you right up. You wanna use wired ribbon on these projects because they'll hold their form better instead of being, you know, loose like a piece of fabric that you would fold over and it'll just lay flat down on itself. So the wire helps give it some support to keep the bow fluffed out when you fluff it. Now I'm just using my fingers there to check the length of my bows to make sure the bottom layer is the longest and that they're shorter. Here is my last tail at 12 inches, the same as the other one. And then using a handy dandy zip tie after I struggle for a moment. See, no one's perfect. Just going to put that on and pull it. I didn't pull it all the way tight, so I'm gonna take a piece of this floral wire here and put through the back of it so that I have something to attach it to the frame. All right, once it's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up toward the back and the tail should be facing toward the back. See the wire there? Now it's nice and tight and we can trim it off. All right, now I'm gonna take the floral wire and put it right up there in the middle Make sure that it is attached to the picks and to the frame. I'm gonna pull it tight and twist it. You want everything to be secure, whether you have it in the house and especially if you have it outside because you don't want the wind to blow it loose. And we're fluffing again. I have a bit of a bow fluffing obsession, I think. You wouldn't believe all the footage I had to edit out for this one thing. All 
All right, so I am dovetailing the ends of the ribbon, which is just folding it over and then cutting upwards from the outside in. And it makes that pretty little dip in the line there. I want mine to be the same length and for some reason, one side's a little bit longer, so that's easy to fix. Better to go ahead and trim it up now. Just taking dot of glue and just securing those two ends outward so you can see the shape of the pumpkin underneath. This part you can't see very well. So what I'm doing is taking the remainder of the ribbon. I'm going to fold it over so that I have even ends. They're almost 12 inches. I'm going to cut them in half. Do you see the ends there? I've dovetailed them and I'm going to fold those pieces in half and take a piece of floral ribbon, wrap around the bottom of it. That's going to secure it. It's going to make it stay in that little in that little V design there. I'm going to use that on the bottom and to just glue one on each side. I'm going to do the same thing here, folding it in half. You can make one side a little longer if you'd like. I'm going to wrap it with that wire. And then you can really put it anywhere you want down there. But I decided in the end that I want one on each side just to balance it. Okay, see my leaf sticking up there? I'm going to go ahead and put a little glue on that and fluff out the tails and glue that down. It looks better that way. Okay, so bending up that little pumpkin and I'm going to add the other one right in there. A little glue. Want to push some of those back in there and pull out the little berries. And that's really all there is to it. Simple, easy, we made it so much cheaper and we got something that looks gorgeous. So if you like these videos and this type of content, please subscribe, share these with your friends if you think that they would enjoy watching. These uh, decorative posters that I got from Dirt Cheap that actually originally came from uh, Target and then two of these Valentine signs that came from Dollar Tree. I've just taken the little metal hearts off of that for another project. I'm going to glue it together with popsicle sticks and some Gorilla Glue sticks. This is just to keep them firmly together without folding tape or glue wouldn't be strong enough for this. So we want it to be to be able to hold the weight of that gather sign once we put that on there. Just showing you how to do that. There are bigger popsicle sticks you can use if you need to. All right, so we we're just flipping it over and I'm gonna take out this poster. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Um, so I'm just gonna lay it out and mark off the size. And then I'm gonna cut out that piece of paper and put the rest of it aside for another project. Okay, so when you have wrinkled paper like this, if you'll gently fold against where that wrinkle is, you can press some of that out, but we'll get it all out later. Okay, so I have overhang on both sides and both ends, and that's okay. I started with the glue stick, and I was unhappy with the coverage. It seemed kind of sticky and gross, so I've got some spray adhesive that also came from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to spray that pretty good coat on there. You can see in some spots it looks kind of wet. And then I'll lay that poster paper back down. It's thin. It, it, it's not a really thick. It's not like cardstock. So it's pretty, pretty easy to work with and get the wrinkles out. I'm just trying to press it down and make sure there's no air bubbles and to make sure that it's sticking well. And it looks like it's repositionable so that's great. And I'm just using my Dollar Tree ruler to press out any wrinkles or bubbles that might be in there. I like this better than Mod Podge because you do get a lot of nasty bubbles and um, you don't have that with this adhesive or with glue sticks really. 
um, as far as my look has been anyway. Okay, so once you've given that time to dry, you're just gonna take a sanding block from Dollar Tree and just sand down from the top on the sides. It's gonna give you a nice smooth edge and it will look like it came that way. Just like it was store-bought. Just keep sanding, try not to pull, you don't wanna tear anything, but if, if a piece is frayed and hanging there, you can kinda of give it a little gentle pull and take that off. And you wanna do that all the way around top, bottom, and both sides. I learned this trick from other YouTubers that I watch that do craft videos. Okay, so I used chalk paint to, to paint my gather sign. I used about three coats, um, and that's, that gather sign did come from Dollar Tree. It's kind of heavy. So I wanted to get an idea of where I wanted to place it, and also I knew that I wanted some type of a frame, so I'm using these tumbling tower game blocks that you can get at Dollar Tree. It's just in the kids' toy section and trying to get an idea of spacing and the layout here. It's easier to, to give it a dry run than it is to glue it down and then decide you don't like it or it doesn't fit correctly because these blocks are not always the same measurement. They're not always the same size. So you just need to be, be careful about that, be mindful about that. So if you wanted to do it all the way around the edges like this, you certainly could. But you can you can change it and do it any way you want. And I decided I just wanted it on the top and bottom. Kind of like um, the other wall hangings that you see that look more like a, like a scroll or something. Um, sort of like that idea. So I'm just using my glue. I'm lining it up. I don't want to put it between each block because it will cause some bulk in there and I, I want it to be kind of a smooth even line so I'm just going to put that Gorilla Glue stick just going to apply that to the bottom and then to the board lining it up between the edge of the board and the block that's right beside it that'll give you a nice straight edge but if you really want it to be super straight you can put a ruler down there you can put a, a long piece of wood under it or whatever um, a level straight edge whatever you want to do but this is farmhouse, so it's not intended to be perfect anyway. As you will see, when I put my last block down, there's a little bit of extra edge there that it didn't cover. So I'll use the same amount on the top and bottom. That still happens. So I'm going to use some of this Gorilla Glue and go around on the sign, which, I'm, as I said before, it's, it's a little heavy and bulky, so you want to be sure that you get a good application of glue on this, but not enough to squish out when you press it down. Try to stay in the center of your letters. And I'm just going to gently press it down to make sure that it sticks. And I've decided that I want to use um, like a rope on the sides. I have this thick yarn that I've used before in the pumpkin video and I'll link that video for you so you can watch that. And I'm just tying a knot on each end, whatever length you want, however far down you want it to hang. And I'm just going to glue the knot to the block on the top and on the bottom of each side. I'm just putting my clamp there so it doesn't move when I'm scooting it around to keep it in the camera. So there we go there. And then I'm going to go right along the edge with a bead of glue to put that rope down. It's kind of at an angle, kind of on the edge, kind of on the side. And I do like the way that looks. All right, then I'm going to take a hula skirt that I'm using as raffia, and I'm going to tie a simple little bow. I just took a, a chunk of it and cut it off and then tied my little bow. 
Yeah, I'm weird about bows. I like for things to be symmetrical, so I'm playing around there to make sure that my my rabbit ears are the same size. And I decided that I want to place those on the sides. Maybe make it look like it's supporting the rope on the sides or the yarn on the sides. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So here's that hula skirt, so you can see that it did come off of that hula skirt. And here you can see how I'm tying it. And that is it. Once you get that put together, compare it to the other bow, trim it up, glue it down, and it is complete. And I love it. It's my pretty little gather sign for Thanksgiving and fall. And I hope that you will try it yourself. I hope you'll subscribe. We've got lots more things coming. And I appreciate you viewing. Please like it if there's something that you liked in this video. And I'll see you again soon. Bye. I've got some sunflowers here. A variety of ribbons and jute, scissors, glue gun, glue, a frame with a plexiglass front and a calendar from Dollar Tree. This is what they look like. There's a big variety at Dollar Tree and you can get them out of the, I think over with the school, back to school section. So I've just chosen this black with the sunflowers. Okay. Carefully tear that out. You can cut it with a razor or scissors if you want to, but I don't mind that edge. Okay, so I'm going to take this frame apart. Just going to take the back off the frame, rather. And the frame came from Dirt Cheap. And there I am. Okay, so we're going to use the back of it. And find placement where I want to put it. And you know, if you want to measure, you can to make sure that it's precise and exactly the same amount, but I don't care about all that. Doesn't matter to me. So I used some adhesive spray from Dollar Tree. Just be careful with that. It can be messy, it can make the page a little damp, and it can tear. I didn't have that problem, so just use my ruler to get the bubbles out. And there's still a few, but I don't mind that. I want to frame it out with a little bit of this jute. Any of you who've seen my videos before know how I feel about the overuse of hot glue. It's very hard to repurpose an item that's covered in glue. So, just want to go ahead and do this with as little as possible. So it's framed around the top and bottom there and then it goes all the way down from the top edge to the bottom edge. I saw a little mark on the paper here. I might have done that when I was getting the bubbles out but went ahead and used a sharpie and fixed it. Now you want to take your glass or your plexiglass, whatever you have there, and clean up all the fingerprints and dust. I think my measurements for this frame are 19 by 13. And I wanted it larger because I have plans for the bottom of it. So I'm just gonna, after that's all clean, put that back together. And I wanna use my ribbon across, well, I guess you can call that ribbon. And I use my burlap strip across the bottom because I want to make a pocket of sorts. Here I am just trying it out, trying to get an idea of where I want to put this. Okay, this part I use a little more glue. Not a ton, but a little more. 
and secure the sides down. I also went ahead and took my stapler and just tacked that down. I had a misfire there, had to go back. Now I want to trim it up. I don't want the back looking bad and I will take the tags off at some point. And then you choose a variety of ribbons that will coordinate with whatever picture that you chose from your calendar. These came from Dollar Tree. And I'm making a bow. I have decided I'm going to purchase a bow maker or try to make one because my hands are small and I have to get the fabric so close to my body to hold it that I keep getting out of the camera range and that's no good for you because you can't see what I'm doing but if you get an idea here I have six inch tails on this bow and I have five inch loops and I'm going to do two loops on each side and rather than stacking it after the bow is made I went ahead and chose to wrap it all at one time so I have two layers here in my hands one green and one of black and white um, checkered When I finish making those loops, I'm going to measure the length of the tail. If you see the black strip down there, I'm measuring that to make sure I get the right length. And then I'm taking this zip tie and securing my bow together. So this is what it looks like before it is fluffed. And I've decided I wanna add a little burlap to the top. So I'm just making a simple um, two-loop bow for the top. You can almost see what I'm doing there. And I cut the tail short on this one. That one is going to be tied off with a long piece of jute. And then I'm going to use that same piece of jute once it's tied down to wrap around the other bows. Get a double knot there so it doesn't come loose. I aggressively fluff my bows, so I want to be sure that I don't pull anything loose in the process. Okay, so around the middle and between the tails with the jute, and gonna give that a couple of knots. and then trim off this excess. And I'll use that jute to tie around the pocket that I've made on the bottom. After, of course, I fluff my bow. Just gonna dovetail here. Makes the ends look a little bit neater. You can cut it at a slant or whatever you choose to do. What do you think about it so far? Pretty good? Okay, so here I am just tying it on one side and I'm going to use the other side for the flowers. I'm going to trim them off so I don't have too much stem to fold up. It makes a lot of bulk and I don't want that. I chose these colors because they match pretty closely to what's already in the picture. Just going to tuck those in there and a little bit of extra greenery. Okay, so now that I know how I want it, I'm gonna wire these together. You can use floral wire or you can use um, a zip tie or a little piece of jute cord. 
whichever one works best for you. See, I changed my mind about that little piece of wire. This just seems to be the easiest for me. Like I said, I have small hands and it's hard for me to grasp a big bunch like that and try to tie it without dropping it and, you know, it just makes it easier. And that's all it is to, is to it. I'm just gonna tuck it in there and I'm gonna use a little floor wire to hold it shut and it is perfectly done. I hope you like it. I hope you try to do something like this yourself because it was easy and thrifted and inexpensive. I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more. If you have any comments, please put them below. I'd love to hear input. If you have any suggestions for videos, I'd be happy to look at those and give it a shot. I thank you so much for watching. And for those of you who have stuck around, I appreciate you being part of my YouTube family. See you soon. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be using these little photo prop picks and a thrifted pumpkin and some houses from Dollar Tree and some scrapbook paper or crafting paper or wrapping paper, whatever you have, and then a piece of this cork adhesive paper that's in the background. It's just scrap I have left. And those paper pads are on clearance at Joann's right now for 97 cents. This came from Dollar Tree. I used it on a previous project and had a little left. Gonna need your glue gun, your scissors, glue stick from Dollar Tree. And if you see there in the right corner, that is my daughter crafting with me. She likes to get her craft on while I'm crafting, so that's her design up there. We're going to remove the backs. You can just press with your thumbs and those will pretty much pop out. Sometimes the paper comes out easily, sometimes it sticks. But if you have any on the edges, you can take a regular nail file, got this from Dollar Tree, and just file that down. And the pieces should come off fairly easily. And if you don't mind them on there, you can just leave them on. So we have three houses of three different sizes and I'm just fitting in my photo props to see what's gonna work the best. Those were really easy to pull off the picks too. Now I'm looking at my paper to decide what background is going to look the best for the colors that we have. Okay, so see there's some remnants of the old paper, but we don't care about that. It's going to be covered, not a problem. I'm going to turn it over and measure. And remember, part of the frame is going to cover some of the edges, so I'm just moving this down a little bit to allow for the width of the frame just to make sure that I have enough paper to cover everything and there's no gaps. So I'm cutting right to the inside of my lines. And just using a glue stick that came from Dollar Tree. Came in a multi-pack with the school supplies, by the way. I think there were eight in the pack, so it's a really good deal. Just gonna put that down and use my handy dandy ruler to make it lay nice and flat. So here I am doing the same thing on one of the other houses. And you'll see the gaps on the side, but that won't matter because the frame will cover it. Okay, so the cork adhesive sheet is going to be a little bit different because it has a little thickness that the paper does not have. So we wanna allow for that so that the frame can seat down nicely around the fork. And it will pretty much be sitting back in its original position against the backing. So the frame will sit flush against the backing. So to allow for that, I'm going to cut maybe a eighth quarter of an inch, something like that to the inside, just about the width of whatever the frame width is. And I'm just kind of estimating. So I'm cutting it there and I'm also gonna cut it on the other side, but you don't see that in the clip. I'm gonna center it peel off this little plastic paper backing and just center it onto the back. And then there is a little gap there because I estimated. So I'm just gonna use this in a few minutes and trim it up on the inside. Using the hot glue, I'm going around the edges here and replacing the backs. 
and it looks kind of like faux shiplap, so it's a nice farmhouse look. By the way, the music I chose is because this is kind of coffee shop music, and I thought it would be appropriate for our pumpkin spice cup up there. Okay, so see there's a space there. You're going to just put your glue there, fit the frame back on top. And here are my little rubber fingertips. And these keep your fingers safe, keep you from getting burned. They came from the Dollar Tree in a three pack. So I've gone around my edges and just made that flush against the edges and it looks fine. And here are my three houses. And these are the items that are gonna go in each one. So I'm gonna take the pumpkin spice cup and I have some of these foam I don't know, dimensional stickers. They're by 3M, but you can get something like this at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna layer them because I want them to I want them to stand up off of the background. So I'm gonna layer two. Two on the top, two on the bottom, and that's gonna give it a little depth when you put it into the frame. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to my pumpkin topiary a pumpkin tower, whatever that is over there. And press him firmly down in the frame too. Okay, the pumpkin, the Happy Harvest pumpkin over there is one that I thrifted. And if you'll know, if you'll see in one of my first two videos, I actually made that one over. Um, so I'm gonna use it now. I'm gonna use a little Gorilla Glue so that it stays for a long time and I'm going to use hot glue for a quick fix. Because I don't know that this is something that I'll ever redo. I really like this particular craft. Never say never. Okay, so you're gonna take a pick of your choice. This came from Dollar Tree. And just, you can put some leaves in this or around it. You can use the berries, which is what I'm going to use. And just cut it into pieces. and use it as an accent wherever you wish. Gonna add a little into the corner where my pumpkin spice and everything nice cup is. Then you can see I've already put some on the Happy Harvest pumpkin up there. And then this is some thrifted raffia. You can use the hula skirts from Dollar Tree if you'd like, but I went ahead and used this. All I did was just tie one of the little strings of it around the center to hold it together and give it a, pa a place to hold the glue and hold in place. did it there for the pumpkins as well and this one I'm going to do the same way and with a little tie in the middle but rather than gluing it straight onto the bottom I've done it sort of at an angle you can just trim that up wherever you want to or need to or you can leave it kind of hanging wild And so here the three are together, and I'm just going to add a couple more berries along here and there to complete my look. You can do this any way you want with any type of picks. If you want to do neutral colors, you can do neutral colors. You can paint the facing of those frames, or you can paint the entire box if you want to. You can do it any which way you like. I hope you're enjoying these fall videos. Uh, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and comment below if there's anything in particular you would like to see me make. I've had some input about doing more projects with the, thifty, the thrifted items that I have, so I'm working on that as well. 
And again, thank you so much for your support and subscribing and sharing. I'll see you again soon. Bye. So this Goodwill palette sign and the frame there both came from Goodwill. The pumpkin is missing a stem. We're going to fix that later. All right, so this is just a picture frame there. And then this is a card, a really pretty card I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to take this frame apart, remove the backing and the glass. Now the palette frame or the palette pumpkin underneath has some raised levels. So there's some areas on the right side that don't have a raised spot. This is not damaged, it's actually made this way. We're going to make up for that in just a minute. Because if you don't seat it down there correctly, it's going to wobble. So we're going to use a combination of the Dollar Tree Fix-All glue and some Gorilla Hot Glue on this project also. I'm going to use two popsicle sticks. That seems to be the right width of space between the edge of that frame and the pumpkin underneath. So again, we're going to make it level by putting these together. So I'm going to use some of the fix-all and some hot glue to do this. Probably not necessary, necessary to use the fix-all, but there's a little weight to that frame and I don't want anything falling off once I get it put together. So just be on the safe side. And the hot glue is gonna glue pretty quickly and then the fix-all will have a better hold, a longer hold in the long run. So for instant gratification, I'm using glue stick. And just sporadically putting it on the parts that are actually going to make contact with the frame. Um, I keep saying frame, it's the pumpkin, the pumpkin underneath. You can see here where the areas are raised. Some of the slats are raised and some are not. All right, so I've got it ready and stable. And I'm just gonna place it down where I want it. I want to put it a little bit lower down, not in the center. Okay, so I'm just going to use the envelope that came with that pretty card up there and just trace it out on a piece of cardboard that came out of a calendar that I bought from Dollar Tree. See? See where I'm going with that? All right, so now I'm going to take some, um, I was going to use some of this tape, but I decided to use the glue stick from Dollar Tree. It works well. Alrighty, so I centered it so it's framed out just a little bit, and I'm going to just use, run a bead of hot glue down the high points of that picket and place it down there. So now it won't look like a frame anymore. It's just going to look like a picket fence with a pretty sign on it. And in case you're wondering, those are those are wheat stems on the thankful card. All right, and so just to hold that down and keep it flat, I'm going to add these pieces. Let them dry for a minute. Now I'm going to pull the stand off the back of that picture frame from before and that is going to be our stem. Isn't that perfect? Fits perfectly. Okay so what you can't see because I'm out of the screen is me wrapping some jute around the top of their to finish off that stem. It's actually not jute. It's that rope looking, looks like rope. It's in the harvest section, but it's stretchy. Um, 
I don't have the packaging to show you that because I took it out of the packaging, but you can use jute. It'll do the same thing. Then I'm using these clamps that came out of the Dollar Tree. They're in the laundry section if you want to find something like that for yourself. And I'm going to let that dry. In the meantime, I'm picking out some ribbon to make a bow. This is going to be kind of a small bow, a little petite bow. It's really pretty. I think it looks like it came from maybe Walmart, the ribbon, but I actually got it from Goodwill. So I've also went ahead and dovetailed the ends of those ribbons. And now I'm just making another one of those, um, another one of those little bows. I believe it's called a funky bow. I'm gonna have to do some research so I can get you guys straight. And you can refer to other videos when I don't get in the camera. But anyway, I'm folding them completely in half, finding the middle of the section, pinching it, and then holding it between my, my thumb and my first finger. I'm just holding it in my hand. So all the loops are up and all the little dovetail ears are down. And I'm going to take a handy dandy zip tie. I love these things. They also come from the Dollar Tree. And you can buy these white ones and you can buy a pack of, I think they're black and red and they're smaller. So whatever, whatever you prefer, you probably get more in the package of smaller ones. It's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, I'm just gonna tighten that up because I know I'm gonna be pulling on it a good bit to fluff it. You know me and my fluffing. Cut that end off and then start laying that bow out. Now nothing goes to the bottom. This is like a, a pancake. Like if you're looking from above down, you're going to see all the little ends sticking around, around where all the little folded pieces are. So all the little ears and all the little tails will all be fluffed out. Kind of like a flower, I guess. And it's going to allow you to have a flat spot on the bottom. Be sure that you turn all of your decorative sides upward and the plain side down. Fluffing, fluffing, fluffing. And fluffing some more. Okay, so that looks good. And I've had plenty of time for that to dry. And this is where I'm gonna put my pretty little bow. It's a very cute little farmhouse rustic sign, I think. See the flat bottom? Gives you a good space to put some glue so you can glue it flat down on your surface. No need to tie it or secure it in any other way. All right, so I'm just gonna press and hold that down and make sure that it gets all around that raised level and that the glue gets through the fabric of that ribbon. Hold it in place. And I'm fluffing again. Isn't it cute though? All right, and so finishing touches. I thought that it could use some leaves up there on the top. Pumpkins have leaves, so we're going to give our pumpkin some leaves. A little glue on there, tuck it under the bow, and that is that. This was a Dollar Tree and mainly thrifted pumpkin wall art. Little pieces and scraps that we put together to make a beautiful piece of rustic country, farmhouse, whatever you want to call it. A stressed picket fence, pumpkin, thankful sign. Yeah. All right. And I am thankful for all of you for subscribing and watching and sharing and giving me thumbs up. I love it. I love the comments and the conversations. Keep them coming and we'll see you real soon. Bye. We're going to start off with one of these plain little raw summer hats.
You can get these at Dollar General when they go on clearance at the end of summer. But you can get them at other stores as well, or you can thrift a hat. I'm going to start off by gently removing the hat band that's there. It's braided and it's pretty, so I think we'll keep that and we'll use that later. Okay, so then you want to choose your ribbon because we're going to make a hat band. So I thought this pretty fall ribbon from Dollar Tree would be good. I'm going to use this and I'm going to layer it with green. And here I am just putting a little bit of glue on here to layer these two pieces together. I just trimmed the wire edge off of the, the truck one so that it would be a little bit smaller. Then I'm just going to fit it around from the front to the back and I'm going to glue it in a crisscross sort of in the back. You have to gently put this thing together so you don't burn yourself but you want to kind of put a little glue on and then cup the ribbon down add a little more and cup it down. If you need to trim pieces of it, just like a little snip so it'll lay flat, you can do that too. I don't have any footage of that, but I did it in two or three curves, I think. So we're just gonna lay that over and then I'm going to trim off the little longer piece of green there into a dovetail. All right, then I'm gonna take these thrifted picks that I got from Goodwill and they coordinate pretty nicely with the colors that I have on the hat band there. So I'm just going to trim these off. I'll pull them off the stem and then trim them off of the little pieces that stick them together. This is a piece of cording, I guess, from Dollar Tree. Just wanted to add that on there, but you really can't see it after I get all the leaves on. And you're just going to take those leaves and kind of alternate your dark with your light colors. It makes each different color stand out better if you do it that way. Or you can make ombre or whatever you want to do, whatever's good for you. So you'll see I kind of pick them up, move them around, and decide what goes where the best. Really doesn't matter. It's rustic. Whatever you want to do. So I'm not going to glue it completely down everywhere because I want the leaves to have still a little bend of a little bit of bend and flexibility so they look like, you know, leaves that fall off the trees. So a little glue on the leaf before it and a little glue on the hat to hold it down. I'm just going to keep going until we have completed the circle there with our leaves on it. All right, now I'm just going back in and adding the few little extra pieces that I had where I felt like I needed a little change of color in my pattern. Just added a few pieces. And then these little sprigs also came from Dollar Tree. Pulled them off of a bigger pick and just bent them around and then glued them down. Okay, so I'm gonna take this strip of thrifted burlap, fold it over on itself, and then I am going to I want to make a bow with it so I'm going to fold it over about an inch onto itself and then gather it up with my fingers just like that and that's going to be the base of our bow and I'm going to use a zip tie to put around there and hold it in place we'll make the tails next Okay, so that's what the little bow looks like. And we're gonna trim off the excess. And now the tails, I'm just gonna have a longer piece of a thinner one, of a thinner strip of burlap. And I just used a piece of wire, twisted around that, and then uh, glued it to the back of that bow. So now I'm just trying to decide what kind of a bow I want to make on the back to go under there. And I think I'm gonna do, I think it's called a funky bow. It's very easy to make, although you will not be able to see me make it in this video. I'm gonna cut two strips that are the same length. I'm going to go fold it completely in half and then go down about three inches, gather that up, 
and then hold it between in my hand between my thumb and my finger there. Then I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other, bunch it up, and then tuck it right next to the other one. So the ears are up and the tails are down. I went ahead and used a zip tie to wrap around the middle of those and you can see clearly now what I did. And I'm going to dovetail the ends, which is cutting them in a triangle upward, outside in, upward. And then that will give me two loops and four tails. With this type of bow, you don't necessarily use the tails to hang down under it. You put the tails in the bow. It's part of the decoration. It's part of the bow. So you'll see kind of what I mean, I think, in just a minute. Just really trying to get an idea. But now you can see how I fluffed it out. Two on the bottom and two are on the top sides where the bow is. So it's only two loops. And I wanted that because it's a little bit flatter and it will accommodate this other bow on top of it a little bit better. So just hot glue that bow to the center of the other bow. All right, after you've given that a minute to glue, you can just go ahead and Cut those ends there also, dovetail. And then you can fluff it out how you like it. I decided I want to put a pumpkin in the center of this bow, so I'm going to seed it on some leaves. Since the burlap is a light color, I use the darker leaf underneath and then a green leaf on top. Then I'm going to take that pumpkin with a good bit of glue and stick it down and then I just tucked two of the smaller leaves under the edge there. So remember that hat band? We're going to use it as a hanger. So I'm just moving it to the top, although you're seeing it upside down, and I'm going to glue that on. And I've decided to use this Dollar Tree burlap wreath, um, <laughs> leaf to go on the top in the center of the hat. And that is it. That's all she wrote. So we have a combination of Dollar Tree and thrifted items in this video. A little pumpkin is also thrifted. It came off of a another project that I've already done and you should be seeing soon and I think it's pretty you could almost say this is boho rustic because it's on the hat so there's the hanger what do you think is this something that you would try does it match the style in your house what style do you like comment below Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you subscribe for more content just as wonderful as this piece. Thanks again for watching, and I'll be back soon. Bye.